Good morning. I'm so excited to be here today. <laughs> My wife says, if you could get here at 6 a.m., you would get here at 6 a.m. I love coming to church. And my 10-year-old, she gets up early even on the weekend to come with me. And if you remember when I spoke a couple weeks ago, she was ministering to me and what my role was. And it's funny this morning as we're talking, she goes, Dad, are you going to do some stomping and some walking around today? And I said, I don't know. I'm not quite like Pastor Kevin. I said, but we'll see where it goes. But I love my 10-year-old. She is so encouraging. And I'm just thankful to have that opportunity to be able to worship with her, and I know that she's having a good time back there in kids ministry. I don't know if I told you guys, but we had eight newborn babies, or not newborn, but babies under the age of one there last week. We had eight toddlers. I said, if you build it, God's going to bless it, and he's been blessing our kids ministry. So again, my name is Mike, and uh, I'm our next generation kids pastor here at NTC, and it's always an honor to be able to speak and I got that call on Monday from Pastor Kevin. He says, are you ready? I said, of course I'm ready. I said, as soon as he goes into a series, I start preparing a message and asking God to provide a word because I've, part of my ministry has been as if Pastor Kevin wakes up sick, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And we all should be ready to go. We all should be ready to go. This series, Don't Fumble the Call, has been uh, a blessing to us, I believe. In fact, I thought about bringing a football today and throwing it on the ground and seeing if all the deacons would dive on it. But I didn't, I didn't want them to get hurt, so I left that at home. But hopefully today you're going to hear a lot of sports analogies. I love sports. I love football. I'm glad Michigan won yesterday. I don't care about state. Sorry. But, so we're going to hear some sport analogies today. But my prayer today is that when you guys respond to the call, that you don't fumble that call. And then you can put into play the things that you've been learning over the last few weeks from Pastor Kevin. And I tell you, as a church, we do a really good job of serving. And I'm so thankful for our volunteers that step up every single week in the kids' ministry and the tech booth, the ones that you don't see. They hide upstairs so that you don't see them, but they're the ones controlling all of the video and the slides and the audio and the music. And at this point, we're going to show a couple pictures up here on the slides. I put a couple pictures up there when we're volunteering. See if the slides, they're not there yet. <laughs> but guys, this summer we did Movie Under the Stars. Uh, it's a, an event that Miss Shy helped host. And they invite the community and they put the movie up on this huge 20 by 20 screen. And there's a few hundred people there. And NTC showed up with about 60 or 65 volunteers. And we're all wearing that He is Risen shirt. Yeah, exactly. He is Risen, NTC on the back. And some of you might wonder, why do we do that? And I can tell you, here's the why. We all had on our lanyards that said we're here to help. And believe it or not, we're in the middle just before the movie starts, and this little girl comes up crying. She lost her mom. Now, we're in a big field, group of, I said, a few hundred people, and... She came to me. And so we got Kaylin, or campus safety, and we got Pastor Kevin and the volunteers. We all went up front. We took over the microphone to find this mom. So I'm just thankful with the opportunity to be able to serve with you all in the community and in this church because what we do matters. What did Pastor Kevin say last week? It's bigger than us. Knowing that the kids each week are back there being loved on, they get to have snack time, and they get to be cared for, and they get to learn about God. It's bigger than anything that we can do. There's a picture of that out at the, uh, out at the night at the stars. Look at all of them. Now, guys, I love numbers, and we're a church of close to 300, and we have 65 people there, and that is a huge, huge number. But imagine that we could double that at the next event. Last year, we gave away over 500 turkeys just before Thanksgiving. I confirmed with Pastor Kevin before I was preaching that we're going to be doing the turkey giveaway again. Miss Marcia and a few of you know how much fun we had giving away those turkeys last year. And I would love to see all of you come and be a part of that. I've seen people, and honestly, it's something that I hadn't really experienced before. People were walking with their little carts to come. They didn't have transportation. To be able to receive that meal and to know that we were a part of that, that was such a huge blessing. So I want you guys to understand that. How about the fireworks? Yeah, NTC is known for having a really great 
fireworks show. But again, we had another 50 or 60 volunteers come and be part of that. No incidences. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got lost. Everybody knew where to go. Everyone knew if they needed help, they needed prayer, they needed to be, have any type of help. We were there for them. And I'm so thankful for us as a church that we can offer that to the community. I mean, look at that picture. We have kids that are volunteering. I don't want to shame any adults, but if these kids are serving and you're not, you might want to rethink your priorities. It's bigger than us. So real quick, if you volunteer in this church, music, uh, kids, any area, would you stand for a moment? And any, anything, maybe you've attended just the events, that's okay, would you stand? I want to give you a round of applause for serving in this church. This is what it means to not fumble the call. We were called to serve the community and serve the people, to love others like we love ourselves. And I'm so thankful that we have each of you that do this. So thankful that you sacrifice your time, you sacrifice uh, sometimes spending time with your family, you sacrifice a little bit of sleep. I got up this morning early. My wife loves it when my alarm goes off at 7 o'clock in the morning. She's like, man, but she understands the priorities behind it so I can be here and I can greet and I can hug. And there's a few family members who know that I'm the only one their kids go to for some reason. I don't know why. But I tell you, a church who is active in serving, people who are active in serving others, they show that they know the playbook. And that's really what leads me to point number one. Know the playbook. My wife got me this Bible. It's an ESV. It's something that I study out of and try to study out through the week. And I'm thankful that she got me this. Because if we don't know the playbook, how are we going to know what to do? I wrote in my notes, it says, You cannot act according to God's purpose if you do not know his words. Last week, Pastor Kevin said, What did Moses and Aaron do when they were presented with the complaints and the frustration of the people? They went to God. They knew the playbook. They understood what to do. Guys, we can't do that if we don't know this. We don't know the Word of God. You can't just get it on Sundays. Pastor Kevin and Pastor Darrell, they do great jobs breaking down the Bible. But it is in that independent Bible studies, whether it's in the morning or in the evening or on your car ride, whatever it is, that's where you can get to know God and grow that deep, intimate relationship couple of verses that I wanted to share with you this morning. First in Psalms 119, 130. I don't know about you, but once I get up into the hundreds, I tend to tail off. I'm not as dedicated. You know, you're doing it every single day. I didn't know there was 130 verses. I forgot. But it says, the unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. How many times have you had someone tell you, I just don't understand? It's right here. It's very clear. It's very plain in the book. The unfolding of your words gives light. Psalms 119, verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How many times have you said, God, I don't know what my calling is. God, I don't know where I'm going. Are you spending time in the word and knowing the path? It's a light. It's a guide. Why do you think football players, I did the math. The NFL players, they play 17 games. If you include preseason, they play 19 games. But do you know that they practice six and train six days a week outside of that? Now you take six times 17 or 19, that's a lot of practice for only 17 games. If you know the playbook, you know where to go. If you know the playbook, and here's the key, you are less likely to fumble the call. Because, see, when you don't understand what it says and you're not paying attention to it, it's hard, for you to, it's hard for you to walk forward in that calling. When you're presented problems, you're more likely to fumble that calling, aren't you? I don't know, but I've been there. I've had problems. I've had struggles. My wife is the one who gets to hear some of my frustrations and my problems, and I'm thankful that she prays with me at night. I'm thankful that she supports me and offers reassurance. Thankful God provided my 10-year-old to say, Dad, it'll be okay. You'll get them next week. Now, quickly, when we started talking about this playbook, there's one particular character, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail today, 
but it's in Acts 8, and I encourage you to read that this week. And it's Philip the Evangelist, not the Apostle, but the Philip the Evangelist. There's actually two Philips. And this guy, he understood what the playbook was. If you go to Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, it actually says this. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve, that is the disciples, summoned the full number of disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching for the word of God to serve tables. And you can preach just a passage on this, and I need you to understand something, that they're not complaining about serving, but they understand that there's different roles in the church. Some of you could never get on the stage and preach. Some of you have told me you don't want to go in kids, and that's okay. Some of you don't like giving out hugs and handshakes like Paul. That's okay. We have positions like mowing the lawn and planting the flowers, hiding up in the tech booth, whatever it may be, for example. But they understood that there was different positions. So the disciples who were spreading the word of God early on in the early church, they gathered up all the disciples, all the believers, and they said this. They said, therefore, brothers, pick out from you among seven men of good repute. That's good reputation. Seven men of good repute, full of the spirit, Full of the wisdom, excuse me, full of spirit and of wisdom, wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. Philip was one of those people. They already recognized him by his behavior. Doesn't that happen often? People recognized him by his behavior. He was living out his beliefs daily, and they said, That is a man full of the spirit. I don't know about you, but I want to be recognized about that. I want people to go, Mike, I know he's going to church. I know he believes in God. I know he does this. Because if they don't, I'm probably doing it wrong. He was recognized as full of the Spirit and full of wisdom. And that leads me to the second point. Play like you practice. What we practice is what we do. Russ doesn't get as good as a guitar if he's not practicing every single week. The music, I don't know, but music was great today. But I, I want to give a special thanks to our sound team in the back. Don't everybody look back there. She doesn't like the attention. There was a meme I saw on Facebook when the pastor's up here praising the praise team and the tech person's going, because we sometimes forget about the tech person. But what they do is very vital because we want to bring everybody into a place of worship. And I felt like I was worshiping today. You guys did great. Man, I just, I could go home after the music because I felt like I worshiped today. I just felt like I worshiped. You guys did great today. Play like you practice. And this character of Philip, as you read along, starting in chapter 6, and eventually you get to chapter 8. And it says in Acts 8, even in facing death as his friend Stephen died, he still, pro still preached boldly to the city of Samaria. Think about that. They had just killed Jesus. Saul was ravaging the church. He kills Stephen. And this guy, Philip, still full of the Spirit, is out there preaching the gospel. It makes me look at these times and go, am I willing to do that? When people are coming up to you and they're saying, the Bible, that has no place here. Are you willing to stand up for what you believe in? Are you willing to pray like you practice on Sunday mornings and during the week? Are you ready to let people know about that Jesus, who Jesus is that you follow? Philip wasn't afraid of that. Practice happens in private, in our daily prayer life, in our daily Bible study. That's what builds for those moments when it becomes public. I always tell people, they say, I don't like to pray in public. And I want to ask them, well, how's your prayer life? because it's still just talking to God. I don't like to read the Bible. Well, are you reading the Bible? Are you spending time in that? Are you just letting the pastor get up here and tell you about something that you know nothing about? We can't do that. In Acts 8, 3 and 5, it says this, but Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house, dragging men and women off, committing them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed Christ to them. 
could you do that as they're dragging them off to prison, stoning them and beating them? Because, folks, there's going to come a day of that. There's going to come a day that we're not allowed to preach publicly. I'm so thankful. Again, I go back to those pictures that we shared. The public, not, they didn't see NTC. They saw a group serving people, loving people, hugging people, praying with people, finding lost children, and doing everything we can to find their parents. That means something. I have so many people ask me, where is this church at? I'm like, well, that's that old brown building, Bristol, Belsey. You know, they all know Nearing's Market, but they, our church has been here for, what, 25 years plus, right, Pastor Darrell? They're like, oh, yeah, that brown building. And every time we come in, and Pastor Kevin shared this with us, as new people come in, they're like, man, your church is friendly. Everybody's hugging everybody. I hear Paul and Tiana's name out there. They give the best hugs. I mean, I want to be known for that, guys. I want to be known for how much we love. Why? Because he loves us. Yeah. Take it a step further when we look and practice like, play like we practice. Would you be willing to teach a children's class this morning so I could preach today? I had some people who were sick. I got phone calls. I'm so thankful that they tell me ahead of time. And I'm thankful that I have a few volunteers that all I had to do is send a text, hey, I need you on Sunday. And they said, I'm there. I'm there, Mike. I didn't have to stress about it. Man, I'm so thankful that we have people that are willing to step up whenever they're needed. Man, I'm so thankful for all of you. Because I believe as a church, we play exactly like we practice. But I tell you, there are still some who are sitting on the sidelines saying, I'm waiting for God to call me. He's calling you. I just need you to listen. But they're waiting for God to call them. They're sitting on the sidelines. They're not moving forward. And you know what I call them? Sitting ducks. Again, we go back to football. We're gonna, anyone going to watch football today? Watch. You're going to see a, you're gonna see a quarterback get sacked. That's when the other team hits him before he throws the ball. He drops back. He ain't looking over here. He's just standing. And then smack. He gets hit. And what happens? Typically fumbles the ball. If you're sitting still, if you're waiting on the sidelines, if you're not moving forward, you're more likely to fumble the call. And we don't want that. We don't want that for you. This verse won't be up on the screen. I added this one last night, so it's okay, slides. But Philippians 4.9, and this is my verse. This is a verse that as I was mentoring under Pastor Darrell that has clinged to me and it has been my driving focus on Sunday mornings and during the week or any event that we are a part of. And it simply says this in Philippians 4.9, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Practice these things. We talk about serving and in the community and in the church and at home. But are you practicing these things? We need to do that. It leads me to my third point. Just do it. I didn't know if we could put a Nike symbol up there, you know, copyright stuff. But the whole tagline, just do it. What's it mean? It means get off the couch and go do it. Put on the running shoes and go running. Put on the Jesus shirt as he's wearing here today. He is risen and get out in the community. That's what it means. Just do it. Be active in what you do. Continuing with Philip and his story in Acts 8. Like I said, I encourage you to read this this week. This is a story that as I was coming, I had never really read this story, understood it. And Pastor Darrell was explaining to me things, and he says, why don't you go read about Philip in Acts 8? And we're just going to focus on verses 29 and 30 today. It says, And the Spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chari chariot. The Spirit said to Philip. What that tells me was, is he was waiting on the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Too many times we act before we are prompted by the Holy Spirit. Too many times we think we know what's best, and then we act. If you ever, ever want to have a conversation, I'll share it with you afterwards. But there was a time in my life that I probably acted a little too soon when it comes to ministry. And I made some mistakes. 
but I'm thankful that God is a forgiving God and a loving God. And you know what he did? He allowed me to learn. He forgave me. And then he gave me other opportunities to be able to share Christ with people. And I am so thankful for that. Nothing is beyond his forgiveness today, guys. Everybody in this room, whatever you're dealing with, God will forgive you. I'm so thankful that he gave me an opportunity to just do it. So we have Philip. He's listening and waiting for the prompt of the Holy Spirit. He's already full of the Spirit. He already knows where to go. He's already preaching the Word. But he's open to receiving the direction. Because sometimes the Spirit sends us in another direction, doesn't he? Sometimes we're over here doing this. And then we get called over here. I told you guys a couple weeks ago when I preached. I was in a meeting. We didn't have a kids leader. This is about a year and a half ago. Pastor Kevin says, what are we going to do? I found my hand went like this. I'll do it. I wasn't even thinking about kids' ministry. I'll do it. Are you willing to put your hand up and say, I'll do it? I want to challenge you today. Will you put your hand up and say, I'll do it? In verse 30, I love this. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? See, when he was prompted by the Spirit, he ran. How many times have we said to somebody, well, I need to pray on that. What that means is that buys us enough time to maybe do it. Maybe give an excuse. I don't tell you all, but when someone asks me something I don't want to do, I go, let me check with the wife, make sure we don't have any other plans. And I'm like, honey, come up with another plan, please. But if, what if we just said, when someone asked us, hey, would you serve and give out turkeys this coming November? I'll do it. I'll do it. Mike, we need you, family, church family, we need you to be at Movies Under the Stars and help these children have a good time. Miss Jasmine, she's new to serving. She's back with our babies today. She was running the bubble table. Do you know how much fun that had to be? She's spraying bubbles across the whole event. Just her by herself, spraying bubbles. Kids, come run, dance, go. She's still spraying bubbles. I'm so thankful that she's like, I'll run it. How about the bounce houses that day? Nobody wants to man the bounce houses because you find yourself yelling at kids to stop, quit hitting, go in line, take your turn. But that's necessary, isn't it? Why? For protection, to keep them safe. Again, I'll do it. Are you willing to do that? Guys, I have teens week after week who keep coming to me and they say, Mike, can we serve back in the kids? Can we hold a baby? Can we play with the toddlers? Oh, it's been amazing. I had three teens last weekend with the babies when we had eight babies. And they're holding them and loving on them. Whew, I got grown-ups who won't go near that wing of our church. <laughs> Sorry. When we have that deep connection with our God, when we have that deep connection with the Holy Spirit, He's going to prompt us. And we need to run when He prompts us. Not walk. Sometimes it needs a little bit of prayer. I get that. But don't use that for an excuse. We need to run when the Spirit calls us. We, need, we don't need to just talk about serving. We just need to do it. We need to be like Philip and run. This morning, as I told you, I'm thankful for the opportunity to serve, but I am prepared every single week to be able to serve. Now, Pastor Darrell knows this because he taught me. He's prepared. He keeps a filing cabinet of the last 25 years of sermons. That way, if he's called on a moment's notice, he can pull that out and allow the Spirit to lead him in that moment. And I've tried to follow that. I tell you, I want to hear, well done, Good and faithful servant, don't you? I want to finish strong. We as a church need to finish strong and just do what we are called to do. Can I sum it up this way for you? Real quick. Because a lot of times, preachers, we have points and we talk. Me, I like to be very succinct. I try to be as short as possible because I like to get the lunch on early. <laughs> but if I could sum it up this way, you'll see it just under there, is walk with God daily. 
Pastor Daryl, I, I talk about him a lot, but we spend a lot of time talking and going over church things and spiritual things. And he tells me every morning, Mike, I give God the first two hours. And I said, I'm thankful I give God the first five minutes. But I at least say, good morning, God. Thank you for another day to breathe. And we need to walk with God daily. Second part of that is we need to be actively loving others. Actively loving people who don't look like us, who don't sound like us, who aren't the same socioeconomic status as us. And I'm thankful we are known as a loving church. Everybody gets a hug or a handshake. I love my hugs and handshakes on Sunday morning. It's all the energy I need. I consider you all my friends. Man, I love it. I circle. My wife, she stays in her chair and she watches me go around and talking to everybody. And then the third part about that, run to serve those in need. Run to serve those in need. Are we willing this morning to just do it, to just do that? Because I don't want you to be a sitting duck, get knocked down and fumble the call this morning. Would you stand with me? I'm going to pray and I'm going to close. And I'm just going to allow you a moment to reflect and then we're going to recite what Pastor Kevin does every single week. Because maybe there's someone in this room that doesn't know God, who has been far from God, or they're saying, what do I need to do to accept that call from God? I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. And it simply says, I admit that I have sinned. I that I have sinned. And I am in need of a Savior. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he died for my sins and was resurrected with all power in his hands. <laughs> I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now, if you said that prayer for the very first time, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But if you want to come find me after church, we'll pray with you. If you need a Bible, we'll get you a Bible. We'll help you take the next step and get baptized in a couple of weeks. Don't be afraid. You've just been called, folks. So, I just want to pray over you as a congregation, and then you can go about your day. If you would, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for this moment to be in church. Thank you that we can worship you, and thank you for your love, Lord. Father, some of us came in needing to hear your word from you. We needed to worship and feel your love and your presence. And Lord, we feel you today. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. Father, I ask that you be with this congregation as they go forward into this world. Be with them that they can run to the calling that is on their life and help them not fumble that calling, Lord. Father, if anybody under the sound of my voice has heard this message for the very first time and they don't know you and they need that relationship, Lord, Father, allow them to accept you as their Savior. Allow them not to be afraid to come find me or Pastor Darrell after service and say, I said that prayer today, Lord. Allow them, give them that confidence to do that. Yes. Father, we pray the Lions win today. <laughs> and we pray that everyone has a good week. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Yes.